Remember, our task is to construct the real numbers in a way that only involves the things we've defined before, namely the rationals. So how is it that we're going to get at the idea that there ought to be something right on the edge here, right on the, right on the cutting edge here? How are we going to get at that idea? Well, the idea of Dedekind was to think about the real numbers as just being some collection of rationals, okay? Just like we thought of the rationals as uh, a, a, an ordered pair of integers, we'll think of the real numbers as collection of rationals that are specified, in some sense, by this, this, this cut, okay? We're going to make a cut right here, and uh, we're going to say that everything to the left, everything, not just this interval of things, but everything to the left is uh, a collection of rationals that will be called a cut. Okay, so here's uh, Dedekind's construction. We're going to define a cut, uh, and we'll we'll denote it by the letter alpha. A cut alpha is a subset of Q. It's not any old subset. It satisfies three properties. Okay, so a cut is a collection of these orange points that satisfies three properties. The first property is that this collection better be non-trivial. So it's not empty, and it's also not the whole thing. Not all the rationals, okay? So a cut is, this is often referred to as the, uh, a cut is non-trivial, okay? Don't want it to be nothing, don't want it to be everything. The second property is a cut will be a collection that, ha that is, in some sense, closed downwards. And what do I mean by that? What I mean is, if you take uh, anything in, the co in this collection, so if you take a little p in alpha, where little p is something in this collection, so take one of these points, then anything to, uh, that's also uh, one of those points and to the left of p is also in alpha. So if p is in alpha and q is in q and q is less than p, then Q is also an alpha. So this is what we, sometimes you hear the, the phrase, it's closed downwards, or closed to the left. Okay. Everybody with me on what that means? Okay. And the last condition is that it, in fact, uh, is in some sense, it, 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 it's, it's like this picture. It does not have a biggest member, no largest member. So if P is, little p is in alpha, and uh, then little p is less than R for some R in alpha. So this is just saying there's no largest member. In other words, there's something to the right of little p that's also an alpha. This is what a cut is. So it's called a Dedekind cut. So let's see uh, some examples. So here's a question. Uh, is the set A we defined before a cut? No, which property does it not satisfy? A from before. The set A from before is not a cut. It uh, does not satisfy two. Fails two. It's not closed downward. Okay. What about this uh, set? How about um, alpha? Uh, all the negative rationals, q sub minus. Is it a cut? First of all, is it non-trivial? Yes, it's non-trivial. Is it closed downward? 
very clearly. And it's uh, got no largest member. Would you agree with that? If you take any negative number, is a negative number bigger? Yes. Good. Is a cut. Excellent. OK. Um, what about this set? Beta. Let's let beta be all rationals in Q such that R is less than or equal to 2. So picture, it's everything including 2 to the left of 2. Is this a cut? No, why not? Yeah, it fails 3. OK, so I think you have some idea of what cuts ought to do just by the properties. Now, of course, you, you, you don't necessarily even know what kinds of things could be cuts, right? But you know it has to satisfy these three properties, OK? So I'm just going to declare that uh, we'll just look at the set of all cuts <laughs> and call that the real numbers, OK? That could be a little puzzling and come across as a little strange. So let's, let's uh, let R be basically the set of all such cuts. And this is, this is our definition. I'll define R to be the set of all alpha, where alpha is a cut. There. That is our definition of the real numbers. What? It's a little strange. A little strange. But the point is, once we prove properties about real numbers that we're comfortable with, then we'll just think about the reals like we normally do. OK? But for now, what do you think the cut is that's going to correspond to the square root of 2? Let's start easier. What do you think the cut is that's going to correspond with the number 1? How about cutting this thing at 1 and looking at all the rationals less than 1? Good. What's the cut that's going to correspond with the number 3? All the rationals to the left of 3. Good. What's the cut that's going to correspond to the square root of 2? That, uh, the, 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 the hypotenuse of that 1, 1 triangle. All the rationals that are, in some sense, to the left of this creature. So it might look like A, but it better include what else? All these rationals. Okay, that's, that's, the, that's kind of the idea. Okay? So let's see that this actually behaves like we expect it does. And that's, that's maybe the, the surprise. So if, if I uh, wanted to cut to the chase, that's really where we're going. right? It, it is going to satisfy all the good properties uh, that we expect the real numbers to satisfy. In particular, it'll be an ordered field with the least upper bound property, and it will contain Q. OK, so the first thing we maybe should do is define um, what the order is. That's probably the easiest thing to see. So this is a structure, right? I've already just declared this to be a set, but now we have to say what structure it is. So this is some set, but we claim, we'll show, it has structure. In particular, it's going to have an order. It's going to have arithmetic and the field operations. This is, the, the, this is where we're going. So I'm going to define an order in the only natural way you might expect it to define the order. Let's define the order. So if I have two cuts, what are these really? These are collections of rationals that kind of look like everything to the left 